This playlist will collect together and organize the individual component modules, which together will comprise our lecture on Bonjour's paper, Externalist Theories of Empirical Knowledge. Here's our overall plan for the lecture. We'll start by talking about Bonjour's general thesis. Then we'll talk about how Bonjour introduces four basic cases, four counterexample cases that he hopes generates an intuition that supports his thesis. When we get to that fourth case, the case of norm, we're going to want to look at that case a little more closely. And our analysis, I think, will reveal that Bonjour is making an assumption about the relationship between our own subjective conception of a situation and the reliability of a process that we use to form a belief. I'll then try to defend the reliabilist against Bonjour's charges. And essentially, my line of defense will be that Bonjour, in fact, mischaracterizes all of the cases that he talks about, not just the norm case, but all of them. He mischaracterizes the way in which the belief is portrayed as coming about. So he mischaracterizes the cognitive processes involved. We'll then try and go through and look at different scenarios, different kinds of conceptions of the cognitive process and see if when we think about the process and the timeline, the way in which the belief gets formed, when it gets formed, when other bits of evidence come into play, whether that helps or hurts Bonjour's case. Finally, we'll end the lecture by considering a problem that this particular defense of reliabilism against Bonjour's counterexamples brings to the forefront. A challenge that reliabilists face, specifically how do they characterize the process by which one generates beliefs in order to assess its reliability. And you have to come up with a means of characterizing that process that doesn't beg the question either for or against reliabilism, for or against justification, and so on. This problem is oftentimes referred to in the literature as the generality problem, though I think it's better described as the characterization problem. So let's turn our attention then to that first part of our lecture. We'll start by talking about Bonjour's general thesis. We'll go through each of the individual cases, talking about why each case is introduced, how it differs from the others. We'll start with Samantha, then Casper, then Maud, and finally ending with Norman. When we get to that Norman case, we're going to want to analyze that case a little bit, talk about whether or not that case is the same or different, or whether or not the intuition is really as strong when we look at the Norm case in isolation from the others. We'll look at the two supporting arguments that Bonjour offers up in favor of his interpretation of the Norm case, and then we'll go on to the next part of the lecture. So let's begin. In his article, Bonjour says that he's setting out to confront, and this is his actual expression, externalist radicals. Armstrong, more specifically, is his stalking horse in this paper. Now, his only weapon against these externalist radicals is his ability to illustrate the intuitive difficulty with externalism, is that on the externalist view, a person may be ever so irrational and irresponsible in accepting a belief when judged in light of their own subjective conception of the situation, and yet they still turn out to be epistemically justified on the externalist, reliabilist perspective. He introduces a number of cases, and these cases are supposed to be counterexamples. They satisfy the conditions, he thinks, for Armstrong's reliabilist theory of non-inferential perceptual knowledge. And so the reliabilist would have to say that the person is justified in their beliefs. And yet intuitively, Bonjour wants to suggest the person seems to be unjustified because they are forming a belief in a way that is irrational and irresponsible. The first case here is Samantha. Samantha generates a belief that the president is in New York City. We'll call that belief BP. Using her clairvoyant power, we'll call that P. Now the belief is in fact correct and her clairvoyant power, Bonjour stipulates is 100% perfectly reliable. Sam has a belief that her clairvoyant power is reliable, though she lacks any evidence for or against her belief about that clairvoyant power. What she does have is a massive amount of cogent evidence that the president isn't in New York City, that her belief that the president's in New York City is false. And this is the irrationality component. What Bonjour wants to say is, look, you've formed a reliable belief. You've used your perfectly reliable clairvoyant power to form 
form this belief about the president being in New York City. And from a reliablest perspective, then that belief is justified. But when taken in the context of this massive cogent evidence that you have against that belief, believing it seems irrational and irresponsible from an epistemic perspective. You can't possibly be justified. And that's the intuition that Bollinger wants the Samantha case to cultivate. The next case is the Casper case. Now, Casper forms that same belief the president is in New York City using that same perfectly reliable clairvoyant power. The belief is true. The clairvoyant power is 100% reliable. Casper has a belief that his clairvoyant power is reliable, though he's aware of massive cogent evidence against the reliability of his clairvoyant power from his own attempts to verify its reliability. Now, how that would come about is kind of unclear. If it's 100% perfectly reliable, how did he get this massive evidence? But again, the goal here from Bonjour's perspective is to try and create this impression that the reliablest conditions for justified belief have been satisfied. And yet our intuitions about this case is that from Casper's own subjective perspective, from his own understanding of the situation that he's in, he is being irresponsible and irrational and can't possibly be justified despite the reliablest predicting that he is. In the next case, Case, we have Maud. Now, Maud generates that same belief. Presidents in New York City using that same perfectly reliable clairvoyant power. Maud has a belief that her clairvoyant power is reliable, and that belief plays a role in her forming her belief about the president's whereabouts. However, Maude has no reason for her belief about that clairvoyant power. And in fact, she maintains her belief about that clairvoyant power despite massive, cogent scientific evidence against its possibility. Let's end this module here, and we'll pick up in the next module by considering that final case, the case of Norm.